So is The Sims. They all work that way. As time is stepped through, characters change and do things, and motion happens. Um, let's see. Um, we can talk about the past, present, and future, now that we understand time. And by the way, time is local to each reality frame. So this, our, our reality frame, this virtual reality that we're in, has its own clock, its own fundamental time. Other reality frames have their own time. Well, what would be another reality frame? Well, your dream frame. That's a different reality frame. Okay? And you notice something about reality frames. When you're in this reality frame, this seems physical, doesn't it? When you're in your dream frame, that seems physical, and this one isn't. When you're in this frame, this seems physical, and that one isn't. Well, there is no such thing, really, as physical and non-physical. It's all just a matter of the observer. It's a perspective. There's nothing fundamental about physical and non-physical. Things appear to be physical when your perspective is in that reality frame. <coughs> and everything else appears to be non-physical. That's taking the theory of relativity one more step. Instead of there is no, uh, um, there is no uh, standard inertial frame, like Einstein said in relativity, there is no fundamental reality frame. They're all just relative to the observer. I just thought I'd toss that in. Um, OK. Um, Databases. I mean, there's three databases. Actually, there's just two, but I'm going to make it three. I'm going to break one into two pieces because it's easier to understand that way. First is the future probable reality. So, okay, here we are in a delta T, computed our reality. Now, we can, we can guess what's going to happen in the next delta T before it actually happens. Okay, we just extrapolate what's going on. Now, these delta T's are very small. Okay, they're like 10 to the minus 44 seconds. Very small. That's a nano, 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 nano second. Okay, very small. Much, much smaller than we can measure by about 35 orders of magnitude. Okay, so to us that seems instantaneous, but it's not really instantaneous. Okay, so that's, these things are very, very tiny. And that's just our, our clock. So what we have to do is try to guess what's going to happen the next 10 to the minus 44th second from now. Well, that's not too hard, right? Because when you guess real short in, you know, it's kind of easy to make that guess. But then we can say, well, well, let's assume that we guess right. Then using that as, a, as truth, let's guess the next one. And we assume that that one's right. Let's guess the next one. We can keep doing that and work it out just as far as we want to. But of course, our accuracy gets rattier and rattier the further we go out because we've got this whole stack list of, of assumptions, each one being that the last one was right. Okay, but we can, we can do that, and that's called the future probable database. Now, if, you know, there's a rock rolling downhill, then the next delta T, what's it going to be? Well, it's going to roll a little further, right? So that's easy. All the stuff is easy to calculate. What about the people and their choices? Well, that's not that hard either, because if, you are, if this is a virtual reality, you are a collection of data, rules, memory, you know, the things we said that was consciousness, your consciousness. That's what you are. You're a, thing, you're a piece of consciousness getting a data stream. That data stream you interpret as this reality. Okay, okay so um, everything happens in the present. I mean, free will happens in the present. So you are being modeled because every thought you had, every idea, every feeling, every tiny thing that makes you up is consciousness, is data. It's all saved. And there's a model of you there, basically, that can project to the next delta T. And it's a pretty good model because it's got all the data of everything you felt, said, done, thought of. So it's not that hard to project you either, but that doesn't mean it's always right. You have free will. You can always do something different. And when you do, the system just has to make that adjustment and run it back up through the calculations whenever that happens. But it doesn't happen that often. Okay, everything then, we make all our choices in the present. After the present, um, that what was the probable future then flows into the past. Now, not in this probable future database is everything that possibly could happen and the probability that it would happen. Okay, associated with probabilities. So then after the present, we make our choices. And our choices, like I say, may or may not be what was predicted, but we make our choices. And then everything that we did, the choices we made, become our history thread. And everything that we didn't choose, in other words, everything we could have done but didn't, 
becomes the non-actualized history. This is really just one database, this one history database, but we're breaking it into two, our actual history and all the things we did and all the things we could have done but didn't. Okay, so now we have these, these databases. All right, next you'll see how these databases are important. All right, now I'm going to uh, talk just a little bit about what all this means in a larger reality. Okay, you are consciousness, your reality is data. How do you communicate to another consciousness? You have to move data. Okay, now how do you make up data? You have to put that data in terms of symbols or metaphors. And metaphors really are symbols, just of a different kind. So you have to put it in terms of metaphors and symbols. Some thought, something that you have. You make it in a metaphor and symbol, and you pass that out there to another. And what does that other do with it? They take the data, that's all they can get is the data you send, and they have to interpret that data in terms of their own symbols and metaphors based on their experience. You can send it out in terms of your experience. You cannot put it in terms of metaphors you've never experienced because you don't have those metaphors. They can interpret it except by the metaphors in their experience. So that's the nature of communication. Okay, you can see that that uh, tells us why there's so much miscommunication. Okay, that's the that's the way it has to happen. Now, uh, um, you know, so experience within various reality frames are defined and limited by your fears and beliefs because the 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 way you interpret that data you get has to do with what's in your experience base. That's all of your knowledge. That's all of your lack of knowledge. That's all of your fears. That's all of your ego. That's all of your love. Everything that you are is pulls together to give a best pattern match for that data you receive. But it's a shadow, it's, a, it's an expression of you, how you interpret that data. And from the sender's viewpoint, it's expression of them, of the data that they send. You can never share an experience with anyone directly. Experience is unshareable. It's private and it's personal. You can describe that experience in terms of symbols and metaphors, and you can share the symbols and metaphors, but you can't share the experience. See, it's unshareable. It's yours. Okay, so here's, here's uh, how some of this stuff uh, comes out. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Bob's first book because everybody here certainly has read that probably more than once. And uh, most people out there in the larger world have read it as well. It's a very popular book. Do you remember uh, once when Bob was out of body and he was trying to come back and he ran into a wall? Yeah, he got into this wall. Well, what is that wall? Some of you may have had experiences similar to that wall. They run into that wall. That wall is just a metaphor. It was Bob's metaphor for a fear of not being able to get back. Okay, that's what it was. He gets the data, he interprets the data, his interpretation was the wall. That was the fear. When you're in that out-of-body state, you often manifest your fears. Now, I'm not talking about an intellectual fear. I'm talking about a fear that's down at the blood and bone and sinew level, not one that's up in your mind. But we have those fears. We have a lot of fears that we don't even know we have. They come with our culture. They come with just existence on this, on this planet. We learn it just by breathing and, uh, and interacting with other people. Remember, he stuck his hand through a hole and got a hook in it, okay? That was the fear of the thing that can get you, right? The boogeyman under the bed when you're a child, okay? That was another metaphor. Um, how about people doing uh, NDEs, near-death experiences? A lot of them go through tunnels, right? They get in a tunnel and they go through a tunnel and there's light at the end of that tunnel and they open up and they're in a different reality frame. Why do they go through tunnels? I assure you it's not because consciousness system is full of tunnels. <laughs> That's not it. So why do they go through tunnels? They go through tunnels because they have a belief that you can't get somewhere without going. Right? Why do people fly in the outer body? Because they have a belief that they can't get somewhere. They can't get from A to B unless they move. Otherwise, if they don't move, there's still a day. Well, that's a belief. That's not true. When you're out of body, you teleport. You want to be, go someplace, you just... Change the data stream, hook into a different data stream, and you're there. You don't need to travel, but we have that belief. That's why we need tunnels. Okay, so these are just metaphors. Um, flying is just a metaphor. What about the great white light? People get into the larger conscious system, and they often will find this. They run into this being. It's a great light, white being, and they feel the love. They feel the connectedness. It is so wonderful. 
they just one with all and and uh, they just rest in that beautiful spot for a moment